How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So on today's video, we're gonna be going over some of the common issues on the 17 to 23 Honda Ridgeline. Uh, this video will be good for anybody interested in purchasing the pickup, whether it's new or used or possibly even buying out their lease and some of the long-term issues you might expect. These cars are relatively um, non-problematic. They do have their issues. They've had a couple recalls, one of them being the fuel pump, uh, one of them being the bed uh, harness. When an issue came out, the whole bed had to come off um the, the truck which is fine you know that's uh we were past that so that was very the very early model uh, i think I believe the first year it was so uh, a couple different recalls and uh, so no big deal honda has addressed all of them uh we do are seeing a lot of uh tailgate harnesses uh being bad causing assortment of different issues so again pretty simple fix um, so that's pretty easy to address, but that is something we do see a lot of. And again, these issues are what I'm seeing at my dealer. Some of them are nationwide, some of them are not. But personally, I'm gonna talk about what I'm currently seeing here at my dealer. And that could change as the years go by. So number two, we have uh, a lot of warped rotor issues. And this is pretty typical of Honda. The, in my opinion, the brakes are undersized from factory. So they heat up quickly, they warp quickly. And then you get a steering wheel vibration or shake. Um, and that could be uh, very easily fixed. You just uh, resurface the rotors and you're good for another X amount of miles or so. Or you could possibly upgrade uh, your rotors to something uh, a little bit bigger or aftermarket. Um, not sure if they have any kits, but there is some DIY stuff that you could uh, look into. So moving forward, these cars come in two different transmission trims uh, or options, I should say. One of them being the 6 uh, AT, which is made by Honda. And uh, we've had a couple different issues with uh, vibrations and uh, uh, the fluid essentially just gets burnt out real quick and it causes the trans to judder. So uh, simply maintaining that a little bit on the aggressive side, I like to do them every 15 to 20,000 miles. If you're doing some off-roading or a lot of city driving, maybe even some more, uh, more frequently, I should say. So that's definitely something you want to consider. And that would be for the six uh, speed uh, trim, which would be the one with the shift level. So this is a 9AT, this is a ZF German Trans. So the one I was talking about prior to this was if you have a shift lever, very easy to identify. You wanna stay on top of the fluid and change it every 15 to 20,000 miles or so. So the 9AT, I personally like, a lot of people don't like it, but I do, I have it on my pile and it's great. Now, my only issue with it uh, personally is the uh, button location in coordinates to the cup holder location. So what's gonna happen, you're gonna put a, a coffee here, a drink, whatever the case may be. And of course, you're gonna go over some bumps and it's gonna spill over and just uh, get into these switches. And at that point, uh, that's gonna be liquid damage and Honda will not cover it. So that's definitely something you're going to want to, you know, just keep, um, you know, just be mindful of. And again, not a big deal but it is something that we are seeing, so something you want to uh, be mindful of. Now, with this trans as well, only with this trans, um, there's a lot of people complaining of um, auto idle stop issues. So what happens is these cars, they turn off when you uh, approach a stop sign or a light uh, in certain conditions. So in some rare cases, the car is not uh, restarting when you let go of the brake pedal. And obviously people panic and uh, rightfully so. Uh, if you expect the car to uh, turn on so you can take off from your uh, light or your stop sign, then uh, you're gonna uh, expect that. And if it doesn't happen, obviously you're gonna panic. So there is a PCM uh, update. And in some cases, the car might need a starter and, uh, along with a valve adjustment and a couple relays. I do have a video of that that I made on a uh, pilot. Uh, now this affects uh, on the bridge line. I believe it's 20 to 20, 23 ridge lines only. On the pilots, is a couple different years. So um, yeah, that's uh, that. Like I said, these cars are relatively, um, they've been great. We haven't had too many issues with them. We had some injector issues in the earlier years, but it seems like we're past that at this point as well. Um, and that's that. Like I said, once again, these cars have been generally great, nothing too consistent, nothing too persistent. If you do have something going on uh, with yours in particular, let me know, let me know what year it is and the issue you're having. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about it, you know? Um, and uh, that's basically it guys. Uh, once again, great cars. I love them. These drive just like the Pilot. And if you're looking for a comfortable uh, pickup with some, um, you know, DIY activity stuff they want to do, some light off-roading or anything like that, then this is definitely a great option 
uh, for you. So yeah, let me know um, what you guys think and uh, let me know if you guys have anything else uh, you'd like me to cover or any future videos or anything in particular with the Ridgeline. But uh, once again, it's a great overall pickup and you should definitely be buying with confidence.